Hello there, and welcome to Success as a Student, a skills podcast for students and anyone who wants to develop key skills that will help them in being successful. My name is Alexander Wood. I create online skills content for the University of Derby. Outside of work, I'm a trustee, a chairperson of a youth group, and the University of Derby Graduate of the Year. In this series, we focus on how you can develop skills that will help you to succeed in your university study, your career, and in your personal development all by interviewing experienced University of Derby staff and successful students. In today's episode, we are further exploring how you can develop a growth mindset. We are going to discuss topics such as, are geniuses born or made? And how you can develop through failure. I personally think that developing a growth mindset is the key for improving the other skills highlighted and discussed in this series. So this episode is well worth listening to. To help us with developing our growth mindsets, today, we're joined by Associate Professor Melanie Pope. So hello there, Melanie. Thank you very much for joining me for today's podcast, All About Growth Mindset. Would you like to introduce yourself to the audience? Thanks, Alex. Uh, And hello, everyone. Yeah, I'm Melanie Pope, and uh, I work in the pedagogic practice team in the Centre for Excellence in Learning and Teaching. Yeah, it's really excellent that I can interview you today. I was uh, interviewing Fiona Shelton in part one of this uh, Growth Mindset episode, and she recommended me to interview you as well because she called you, in her words, an expert. I'm sure you being academic and modest, you probably wouldn't use those words yourself. But it'll be really interesting to get your views on what a growth mindset is and how people can develop it. So first of all, what do you think a growth mindset is in your eyes? Yeah, it's a really great question to start with. So I think the first thing I would probably say is that we've all got mindset um, about ourselves. We just don't realize it is the first thing. And it's it's the attitudes that we have about ourselves and and the way that we learn. Uh, it's our beliefs about ourselves and, and how we learn, how good we are at learning or how good we think we're not at learning. Um, and and mindset is is a name that Carol Dweck gave to these beliefs and attitudes, um, and and really these these beliefs and attitudes fluctuate depending on the circumstances we're in, depending on what it is we're learning, um, and she calls them fixed mindsets and growth mindsets, um, and so they vary all the time. That's the first thing I'd say is that we we kind of don't have a mindset, but what we are in all the time is this constant state of fluctuating uh, beliefs and uh, and uh, views about ourselves, about how we learn and how good or, or not good we think we are in learning situations. And that doesn't matter whether we're in a formal situation like being at university and learning on a course or, you know, whether we're learning to bake a cake, mm. uh, whether we're learning a sport, uh, whether we're learning something really, really informally um, or, or whether it's something very, very formal that comes with, you know, a certificate and a qualification. It doesn't really matter. We'll have views about ourselves in that environment. And I'm sure if most of us think back to school and think about certain subjects, we'll probably think to ourselves, oh, I was really good at that. You're laughing. You're smiling. I can see it's happening already, isn't it? I was really good at that. I was really, really rubbish at that. Or I loved that, but I wasn't very good at it. Or, you know, we, we have those beliefs, those views. And that's what our mindsets are. Um, So just to say a bit more about the fixed and growth mindsets, really, a fixed mindset, as as Carol Dweck characterizes it, is is that view that this is how good I am at this particular thing. And it's fixed. So it's if I talk about myself, for example, I am this good at maths. Mm. And I've carried that view since I was at secondary school. I'm not very good at maths is what I generally think. Um, and and so I've carried that view for a very long time, and uh, and I try to avoid hard maths. I'm pretty good at mental maths. I can I can add things up and multiply, but beyond that, I think I'm not very good at maths. And I've carried that fixed view for a very long time. Uh, a growth mindset, however, is where I tell myself I can really learn this. So, um, for example, I'm a big fan of uh, of uh, Great British Bake Off, and Junior Bake Off's even better. Having watched that with my daughter, I've now been experimenting with shoe pastry and all sorts of things. And now I believe I'm much better at baking than I thought I was before. That's my growth mindset, which is where I'll say to myself, I can try things out. And if I get it wrong, I'll be a bit better next time and I'll keep trying and I'll I'll, I'll improve. And that's essentially the difference between the, the mindsets is that 
we fluctuate depending upon what activities we're doing. But we hold these views about ourselves. And sometimes we tell ourselves, I'm only this good at this thing. And we stay in a fixed mindset. We tell ourselves, that's it. That's how good I'll always be at this thing. And that's fixed. And other times we tell ourselves, oh, I'll keep trying at that. I'll keep, I'll keep working on it. I can get better at that. And that's a growth mindset. And it's just that for different activities, we tell ourselves different stories about our abilities for whatever reason we do that. And, and it's, it's, so we're never in a, in a particular, we can't say we're one mindset or another, full stop. Yeah. It's just that for each of us, for different things that we do, we hold generally growth or fixed mindsets. And sometimes we'll fluctuate in the same, you know, we'll, we'll be in a learning session, for example, at university we might go in thinking I'm rubbish at this and as the session goes on we might find actually I'm better at this than I realized and we'll shift from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset as suddenly the penny drops so just to you know let everyone know that mindsets move they shift but we've all got them it's very interesting that you make that point because in my mind I try and have a growth mindset as much as possible but I know it's just with some things I definitely don't at times like I know um using a new piece of software at times you're like oh I can't do this and it's just about trying to push through and carry on when that's the case uh, in my mind but there's other things where I'm happy to keep learning and I think it's interesting how you say how you can both have one and not so you've talked about a growth mindset about what it is and how it can differ but also occur at the same time as a fixed mindset why is it important for a student to develop their growth mindset? Yeah, that's a great question again. Um, so really, our growth mindsets are, are what enable us to, to make progress and to make progress faster. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they are the difference, really, between people who make the best successes in their lives and the people who who will stay stuck at a particular point. And that doesn't mean that those people that stay stuck in a fixed mindset aren't successful. They're often really successful fixed mindset people, but they will stay successful in the things that they're good at. Mm. So they, they limit themselves. Growth mindset people will open themselves right up and say, I'm really going to push on through at the stuff that I know I'm not good at. And that's where the possibilities open up. So if I give you, a, you know, an example of myself again, I'm, I'm quite happy to share my own experiences because this is why I find growth mindset so fascinating. I recognize my own uh, fixed and growth mindset so well. I was really good at English at school. So I've talked about maths and my, my fixed mindset there. I also had a fixed mindset about English and I was really, really good at English. But my fixed mindset was I'm really good at English. And as a result, I went to university and studied English because I told myself I'm really good at English. Mm. And actually, I didn't look beyond the possibilities of studying anything other than what I was good at. That's interesting. So I limited myself. And it doesn't mean I wasn't successful. I was successful, but I didn't look at any other possibilities or I didn't look at what are the skills that I can take from what I'm good at and apply to the areas where I think or I'm telling myself I'm not so good at or I mm. don't know things yet. So I set up limitations for myself. I created a very narrow space in which I could be successful. So it makes you very sharp in that one area, but in yes. other areas, if that area so was not as lo no longer relevant, for example, or you asked to do something that is beyond those that sharp scope that you're good at, it yeah. might not be useful. I know that... Um, one thing that I tried to learn and develop was marketing skills alongside my law skills because I realized I couldn't do anything like that. And it's one of the reasons why I'm able to make basic things. I'm not very good at it. I always used to say I can't do art. But then I realized that nowadays you don't have to be good at drawing to do art. You can do other things. And even now there's fixed because I don't try and draw to develop that skill. I just go around it and circumnavigate, which is quite still fixed in that view. But yeah, it's really interesting that even with successful people, you can be fixed so yeah what... really successful people are often very very fixed in their mindsets because they stick at what they're successful at so it's really important for us to try and develop our growth mindsets to enable us to open up the other opportunities that are available to us it's not just about people that are struggling 
it's about everybody opening up their, their their growth mindsets. So in terms of, you know, growth mindsets come into every aspect of our lives. They're about our personal development. You know, who am I and what do I enjoy doing? Do, do I shut down when I am learning something that I think I'll enjoy and then it gets a bit difficult or I don't find it easy anymore. So I stop doing it because it's not fun. Well, well, where's, where's, where's the fun in kind of not pushing through? And, you know, mm-hmm. so we look at sports people and people that enjoy doing things in their spare time. Again, are the people with the growth mindsets who push on through usually and stick at something, have tenacity and push through the difficult times. Um, and in terms of your personal development, it, those are the things that are going to add value to who you are when you leave university, aren't they? So it's not just about whatever programs you're studying it's about what are the other things that I've done um so again your growth mindset is is the the aspect of you that enables you to maybe do additional things or to to also draw on the experiences that are perhaps not about your program but are about the challenges that you encounter in everyday life that that add to your your CV, you know, you many, many students will have to have gross mindsets about everyday life in order to be able to study because you're juggling so many things. So you're not just doing your studies, you're juggling jobs and families and caring responsibilities and other things like that. Actually, those require really, really gross mindsets to, to be able to manage those effectively, creativity, managing different um, pressures and priorities at the same time. You've got to have growth mindsets to be able to do those. So it's how how do I capitalize on those skills? So that's in your personal life. In university studies, I have to say your growth mindset is is fundamental because, again, if we stick with the things that we're really good at in our university studies, I think we'll end up narrowing mm our options, narrowing the things that we choose to do, narrowing perhaps modules that we take because we're sticking with the things that we we like or that we know that we do really well. Like avoiding um, exams, for example. I know people okay, who do that. so there's one. Okay. Yeah. And I know people who avoid particular options because they think they're more, more difficult. So I used to teach um, on English degrees and then I used to train English teachers um, and and I quite frequently used to, well, no, not quite frequently, very frequently would come across people who wanted to train to teach, but hadn't studied poetry during their degree because they thought poetry was hard. So then I'd have to get them to do, you know, to study some poetry because you've got to be able to teach poetry to children. How can you how can you not love poetry and want to teach English? So. You know, it's it's those things. Where am I limiting myself? Because there's a fundamental question there, isn't there, about your engagement with your studies. If I'm saying to myself, that part of my studies is too hard for me, what am I saying about myself and my engagement in my studies? So if you're setting yourself self up with your fixed mindset about yourself from the word go, mm. and instead of saying actually Maybe there's something that I can really, really benefit from. And, and it's again, it's about that creativity and saying, right, if I think that's really tricky, where can I go to for support? And is it true? Is it true that it's too difficult or is that just my self-belief? It's surprising how many things are actually fairly easy once you actually start trying with them. Uh, I know with my assessments that I've just recently done, at times I wanted to say, oh, it's going to be really hard because there's all this to to learn or, or you have to go to, I was learning about the criminal procedure rules or the civil procedure rules. And I was like, oh, they're going to be really complicated. And then I went online, found them and they were really easy, but I put them off because I imagined they were hard. And so I had this fixed mindset of they were difficult and hard and I didn't explore and try and realize actually they're easier than I thought, or actually I can do this. Yeah, it's a really good point. We do tell ourselves stories, don't we, that we, we've imagined something is going to be hard or, or something is beyond us or something isn't, that, that's not what I do or that's not what I'm interested in um, and without finding out sometimes. Mm. And, and that, that, can, that can deprive us of, of opportunities, of experiences without us finding out. So I think the key is finding out. I'm not saying it will be right for you, but I'm saying find out um, and get the information so that you you approach it with a growth mindset, um, and then make an informed decision. Um, our our fixed mindset is often quite emotive. It's often telling us you can't do this, you're not good at this, um, 
And and that comes from, you know, from lots and lots of conditioning from when we're much younger. We, we really do tune into that emotional sense of I can't do this. And it, it's, it can be quite painful. So I understand we've all got it. So what you said essentially is a growth mindset is useful for your personal development, your in terms of developing skills and getting opportunities and and also therefore in, in increasing your CV and therefore your employability and therefore the opportunities that will open up to you in the future. It will also help you in your academic study by allowing you to take options and learn things that you may have otherwise not learned and to develop skills that will again, and like I said, in the future help you with the employability. So essentially it's useful in almost every way. And when I was making this series, I look I was looking at how skills help other things and having a growth mindset will definitely help you to develop all the skills I discussed in this series so I think it's probably one of the most important skills would you agree with that yeah I absolutely would it's it's why it's one of the things I'm I'm most passionate about to do with learning because I think it it kind of sits underneath our approach to everything that we do in learning I wish I'd known about fixed and growth mindsets when I was much younger unfortunately Carol Dweck hadn't done her research at that point um, but I wish I'd known about it because it would have changed the way that I approached what I did in my own studies. If I'd known that I was limiting myself by saying to myself, that's too hard, I can't do that, instead of saying to myself, I find that challenging, but that's something to explore. Uh, if that's difficult, it means I'm learning. You know, I, I and, and I, I think we'll we'll probably talk about this a bit more, but you know, a lot of that came from my own background and my own um, my own kind of uh, family expectations, I guess, around um, high performance at school and doing well, and you you must get grade A's or or you know what's going on kind of thing. Um, and so you learn to try and you know value yourself by by high grades sometimes, and that doesn't always mean that you do things that help you to learn because learning means we have to get things wrong. Yeah. We don't learn till we fail. And that's what, again, what, what growth mindsets are really about. We haven't talked about that yet, but um, if we're going to learn and we're going to be of value to somebody in a job, we've got to be willing to take risks. We've got to do new things that haven't been done before. Mm. We've got to be ready to go, well, that didn't work, but we've learned from why that didn't work. So we'll try something else instead. And until we're ready to do that, we're not of much use to an employer, really, yeah. because if all the answers are already out there, an employer doesn't need us. What an employer needs is somebody who's willing to come in there and, and work with the challenges that they present us with and identify what doesn't work and what does. Um, so, so yeah, so, that's that's the beauty of growth mindset. So it'll even make you better once you're in that job as well uh, and make you be able to do new things. I think it's such an important skill. So what I'd like to talk about now is now that we've established it's important is how people can develop that skill. And one thing you just mentioned there is exactly that, which is feeling free to fail and willing, being willing to take risks. And I think that's such an important thing to discuss. And it actually, I, I have an entire episode of this podcast series based on that, that people can listen to uh, after this has come out. So um, do watch that when it comes out. Um, but it was earlier you were talking about how you developed your your background and it'll be interesting to hear about how you developed your current mindset uh, to see if the students can take anything from that mm, sure yeah because it's 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 so difficult isn't it we only we only experience our own kind of home background and our own cultural backgrounds and then our school environment and you know school leads us to to a kind of that approach of you've got this 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 attempt at this exam and you've got to get your grades and then you've got your next set, next set of exams and you've got to get the grades there um, and you know with so much coursework now not not being there anymore and we've gone back to a much more exam based system in school which means those opportunities to kind of practice and improve have gone so when we get to university we have a really strong sense of it's all about performance and exams and we've got to get things right first time. Mm -hmm. um and and actually university isn't isn't school um and yes there are assessments and exams but there are lots more opportunities i think to get formative feedback to try things out to experiment to talk things through with each other and i think for me that's the difference is when you when you're at university taking every opportunity you can to to make the most of 
chances to get feedback, chances to talk with each other as students um, about what you're learning to work things out because sometimes there aren't even, you know, there aren't right answers. There's only the answer that you've come up with or the interpretation you've come up with or the application of a theory to a problem that you've come up with. Um, and what we learn at university often is is so much more, uh, what's the word? It's, it's, it's not a right answer anymore. There are multiple answers mm. and we're coming up with our answer. So we need to have confidence in, in, in the, the, the answer we come up with. And that's quite scary because we're used to looking for a right answer. Um, and so from our, you know, our previous educational experience. And so that can be quite challenging. And I think that's the shift is, is having the confidence to say, we're going to try this out. We're going to have a go. I and mean, if it doesn't work, we'll learn from it. And, and it's doing like that lots of times, as many times as you can, before you do your assignment that counts. Yeah. Because a lot of people put all of their effort into that final assignment. They wait, 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 put all of their effort into that assignment that counts and then get you know really upset when they didn't get the marks that they wanted. And actually, the key is the build up to that assignment. It's making the most of every opportunity to discuss and explore and talk to your tutors and talk to each other and read around and make those considered judgments and decisions, because that's where you can get it wrong. The mm. key is getting it wrong as many times as possible before you do your summative assessment. Yeah. In classes, I'm often viewed as someone who gets things wrong a lot because I get things so wrong in tutorials and and in the lecture i'll put my hand up say what i think the answer is and the lecturer goes sorry that's wrong but then they say <laughs> here's what the right answer is and then when the exam comes around i get it right yeah, yeah. And... it is it's just making every opportunity to try things out practice 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 fail 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 as many times as you can before because every time we fail we understand why it failed or why it was wrong or we get that opportunity to get the right answer. But if we leave everything till kind of, you know, the last minute and, and just put all of our effort into that final assessment, then we haven't had those chances to get it wrong. And we only learn when we get things wrong. We think about, you know, when, I, when I'm practicing baking or whatever other skill it is, whether it's sport or, I don't know, an art, art on craft or anything, gardening, it's getting it wrong is where we learn. Yeah. And, and it's, it's those opportunities to fail that we need to make the most of. Um, you know, I, d I don't know how, how many people watching this will, will know James Dyson's philosophy, but his philosophy is you get it wrong as many times as it takes. And when he was inventing his dual cyclone vacuum cleaner, it was over 2000 mm. times that they got it wrong before they got it right. But they kept going. And that's the point. You keep going with the failures because every failure we learn from. And, and, and that was the shift for me, really. I had to learn to stop getting it right because getting it right was being safe yeah. in English to learning to getting it wrong and finally understanding that oh, at last I'm learning. Because mm. when I get it right, when I get things right, I'm not learning. I'm just regurgitating what I already know. I totally agree. Like I feel like putting yourself in a position where you do something where you can fail is an opportunity to learn. And even if it hasn't totally failed, there might be still elements that have not gone as well that you can learn from. Yeah. So if something's gone 90% well, well, that's still a 10% failing that you can learn and improve upon. And I just think getting proper feedback can really help with that. And then you learn to use that feedback properly. And we're going to discuss that in another episode of the series that people might think is useful about reflection. So yeah, I think it's really crucial how you developed your growth mindset through taking opportunities and learning and developing. But that also links to a question or something that you raised with me before we started, which is about how geniuses are made. So you asked me earlier, a genius is born or made? And I feel like this answer would probably link to that. So what do you think? It does. I think because I just think it's a really important question for us to think about. Are geniuses born or are they made? And I think we tend to think that geniuses are born. If we think about people, you know, think about people like Einstein. Uh, if we think about people like Steve Jobs, uh, think about people like Walt Disney. We tend to think of them as these great creative geniuses, and they just they just were. They were just genius people. Um, but actually, every single one of those was was rejected as fairly useless at some point in in their lives. And we don't always know that mm. about them. We always see, whenever we see 
kind of really successful uh, people, we only see the end product. And yeah. that's the bit that we forget. We don't see what happened before they became the, the successful person in whatever way they're successful. Definitely. So, you know, if we take someone like Einstein, who we might think of as the kind of pinnacle of academic excellence, um, Einstein didn't even speak until he was four years old. Mm. His parents thought he was educationally subnormal and his, he was expelled from school because his teachers said he was mentally slow. And, you know, look what Einstein became. And and he didn't think about growth mindsets. He just kept at what he was doing. He just kept at it. He, he didn't have a sense of, oh, you know, I'm not going to have a fixed mindset. But he just believed in what he was doing so much he kept going. Um, think about Walt Disney and, you know, perhaps one of the most creative people we might think of. Well, he was fired from one of his first jobs on a newspaper because they said he lacked imagination. <laughs> I, I can't think of someone we could think of, you know, less as, as not having imagination. Steve probably... Jobs, we, we all know, was fired from the company he started and, and was left penniless. Um, and there are others, you know, Michael Jordan was was dropped from his, his school high school basketball team because they said he, he lacked skill. Um, J.K. Rowling was rejected by 12 publishers because they didn't think her writing was good enough and we could go on. So people we see as successful, we don't we don't see the story that comes before. And that yeah. story is 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 always about just having enough of a growth mindset to, to embrace the failures and to just keep going with whatever it is anyway to have that belief in it to to have the growth mindset that says that that might have been a failure but I've learned from it and and that for me is is the key really we embrace the failure and and that's what I've had to, to do I suppose in life is learn to embrace failure not embrace failure doesn't say I'm I'm a failure. Fa a failure says I've got something to learn. And that's that's all it is. It just says I've got something to learn. And that's what I need to know. What do I need to learn? And then I can move forward. If I don't fail, I've got nothing to learn. What am I doing wasting my time here? Exactly. I think uh, something that's really important there that you were saying about all these people who failed originally and then became successful I think a lot of them took it to heart and took that feedback on board not imaginative enough okay well I'm going to become more imaginative I'm going to find ways of doing this and develop that skill I was watching um, a film that recently came out um, called Spider-Man Far From Home and in that film the character Peter Parker he believes that Tony Stark who was his mentor as a god basically who's never got anything wrong and he learns at the end that this man had actually failed lots. And that's when he finally started to being who he was and feeling free to fail also. And then he became more confident. So if you do look up to a role model, always remember that that backstory there, that is who they really were before. So I think that's all very interesting as well. But there's only one other thing that I think I'd like to discuss with you um, just briefly before we get to the, the final question about your advice of being successful, which is, are there any barriers that people might face that come and stop them from developing their growth mindset? Yeah, that's important. It is. So some of the barriers are external to us. And I think we need to recognize that growth mindsets uh, and fixed mindsets aren't just created internally within us. They are created externally, too. So we will have barriers that will have come from from our environment around us, whether they're our families uh, our teachers at school who've told us that you can't do that, you'll never get a better grade than this, you're, you're only going to be in this set at school for maths, English, whatever it is, mm. because you're not good enough to be in that next setup, etc. I mean, just putting people in sets in the first place is all about a fixed mindset, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, we get it from our parents. You know, you're good at this, you're not good at that. We, we know we hear that um, from them and, and other people in our families will say, oh, yes, yeah, so-and-so is really, really good at this or oh, so-and-so is not so good at that, are they? Um, so we, we get those messages all the time. And that's where our mindsets come from a lot of the time. You know, we, we hear a lot of those messages as well as as telling them to ourselves. Um, so those are part of the barriers. Um, I think socially, we, we will experience barriers. We will see ourselves in particular social groups. Um, so we will, mm. um, you know, experience I, I belong to this social group, not that one. Therefore, I can or can't yeah. uh, mix or move into that, that social group or into that job, uh, that kind of thing. So 
So there are those kind of barriers, maybe economic barriers as well. You know, I might like to do this, but I don't have the economic wherewithal to do it. So I'm limited. I can't maybe can't afford to go to university, et cetera. So we, we will have barriers that will be telling us you can't do these things. You're fixed. You're not able mm. to do these these things. I think there are other barriers, though, which are much more about our mindset. Um, and those barriers are things that we tell ourselves. So we will tell ourselves in, in a fixed mindset, the barriers that we tell ourselves are things like, <clears throat> I will never be as good as so-and-so at this. We compare mm. ourselves. I think that's one of the biggest barriers. We will compare ourselves to our siblings if we've got them. Uh, we will compare ourselves to other people in our classes at school. And and sometimes that, you know, that can be really limiting. Um, you can you can compare yourself at the age of five to somebody else in your class and spend the rest of your life telling yourself you'll never be as good as somebody else at a particular thing. You know, what rubbish. You know, you're five. Uh, you, you're just growing at different rates. Or actually, maybe that person was 10 months older than you. And at the age of five, that's a really, really big gap. But I found um, that being born you know, honest. That's exactly it. Exactly it. You're born in August. That person was born the September before. There's 11 months difference and you're only five years old. And you spend the rest of your life telling yourself, I'll never catch up with the rest of the year group. I will always be behind them. So there are those factors. Comparisons are the worst. We know we compare ourselves all the time. But something else I think that we do is we tell ourselves things like, um, if that's not easy, I'm not very good at it. If I've got to work hard at something, I'm not very good at it. And actually, that's not true. So we think we think that talent is when something comes easily. And if something doesn't come easily, we think, oh, that's that's not me. And actually, talent doesn't come easily. You know, we know from from sports stars and you know all sorts of of, of talented individuals that they've they've worked musicians they've worked for hours and hours and hours and hours. And again, back to our genius geniuses born or made. Actually, they've made themselves into the geniuses that they are. And, and I think we, we don't always realize that. So I think those are some of the barriers. Again, they're the stories we've either heard or the stories we've told ourselves. But when we get to university, we can we can crack those stories. Mm -hmm. We can start to begin to tell ourselves that failure is when I learn. Failure doesn't mean I'm a failure. Failure tells me that I am finally learning something and challenging myself. Hmm. I think uh, just a point about failure, what you've said there, I think uh, failure is a very subjective term and I think you should define it yourself. I know um, I know for me, a failure used to be not getting a first when I was in my third year, but yeah. for my first year, failure would be passing or failing. Is it, sorry, failure would be passing or actually physically failing the exam, so getting yeah. less than forty percent. So failure is subjective. So failure yeah. can be personal to you and what that means. It doesn't necessarily have to mean failing the actual exam, but it could mean doing less or not as well as you hope to do. Definitely, it's a really good point. Absolutely right, and we do set our own definitions definitely of what success and failure looks like for us. Yeah, and something that you mentioned earlier is about sometimes others set those for us and that can also help you with a growth or fixed mindset so you mentioned how your parents said you had to get a's and everything or yeah. why not um yeah. so that's another thing to think about i think university especially if you're just starting university is a really good opportunity to break from those and break from the external barriers so no for me i had my i had the fact that i was living with my parents before i had the fact that i was um had a social group of people who would often push me down at times and at university I was able to change all that and have a new start where I could be free and really try and become a bit more independent and challenge those mindsets that I developed because of the circumstances around me that's a really great point absolutely great point yeah so yeah given everything I've just talked about think about absolutely how you can support yourself by changing some of those factors around you to support more of a growth mindset mm. Definitely have pos having positive people around you, having uh, getting involved with a mentor who can raise your aspirations, things like that can be huge for being positive and realizing your true worth and how you can develop. Even if you're slow, having a slow start so far, it doesn't mean you can't turn it around. Uh, I know lots of people who have been successful later in life. I'm sure you have as well. Definitely, uh, yeah. Is there anything else about growth mindset that you'd like to add before we go to the final question? 
No, only to say that the um, the oldest person I ever taught was 59, who who said to me he wanted to go to university on an access course on my first ever teaching job when I was 23. And uh, so I taught him on the access course and he wrote to me uh, five years later to tell me that he got his degree at 64. So absolutely anybody, anybody can change their mindset about what they've done their whole life and, and get where they want to get to. Because he did. He just he changed what he did and he knew what he wanted to do, having had his entire life of being told what he was and what he should be and what kind of job he should do. Um, so, yeah, but it's but at the same time, I recognize it's not always easy to hear the little messages we tell ourselves. So we have to tune ourselves in and that takes a little bit of tuning in. So we have to be kind to ourselves as well is the other thing. And if we hear the fixed mindset, don't, you know, don't be unkind to ourselves, just spot it and, and then do our best to, to tune into more of a growth mindset. I think it's an inspirational story that you mentioned there. So I think the final question that I'd like to ask is something I asked all the guests that I have on this podcast series, which is what advice do you personally have for a student who wants to be successful? Okay, so this would link into what you just said a minute or two ago, Alex. You need to know what success means to you because nobody else can define that for you. Absolutely nobody else can define it. So first of all, what does being successful mean to you? And don't be, for a minute, swayed by what anybody else's definition of success is. And know that your definition of success can change because if you've got a growth mindset where you start with when you begin university, that definition of success might and probably will change. Mm -hmm. So so have your own definition um, and, and it doesn't matter what anybody else has got. No comparisons. And then from there, I think my other advice for being successful is is to know yourself and be true to that knowledge of yourself. So again, this is about not comparing. And it's also about not looking back at the messages you've been told all the way through your childhood and through your growing up and through whatever experiences you've had before coming to university. Because um, if you're at university and you've made that, that decision to study whatever it is you're studying, that's, that's part of a commitment to yourself to, to do something that is important to you. So stick with that um, and use that to help you to stay with your growth mindset because you've already started the journey of developing your growth mindset. So stick with it. Don't be put off track unless you absolutely have to. Stick with your vision for yourself. Stick with and stay true to who and what you are and know that if you encounter what you might see as failures on the way, they are part of the learning journey and they're, they're not about you they are just about the learning that you're going through. Amazing. Thank you so much for your time, Melanie. I really appreciated everything you had to say. I'm sure the audience suited. You're really welcome. This really was an inspiring discussion. And I think I have so much that I'm going to take away from this interview and the interview from the first Growth Mindset episode with Dr. Fiona Shelton. If you haven't listened to that episode yet, I highly recommend giving that one a listen as they can be listened to in either order. As per usual, I would like to highlight some of the key points that I took from this interview that I'm going to try and incorporate into my studying. The first key point is to stop learning to get things right. Melanie mentioned that if you aren't being challenged, then you aren't learning or developing. So learn to do things that can go wrong. And if they do go wrong, then, well, you've got an opportunity to improve and learn. The second key point, and probably one of the most impactful points that was made, was to not compare yourself to other success stories. When you do look at others who are successful, you don't always see the struggles and failures that they've had. I was really inspired by hearing about the background of the stories of Einstein. I couldn't believe that someone as renowned as him couldn't talk until the age of four. James Dyson too. 2,000 attempts. Now that is perseverance and you can really see why he eventually got it right. Their stories are both successful as they embraced their failures, they reflected and they learned from them and eventually found success. And you could do that too. All it takes is the right mindset, perseverance, motivation and reflection. The third and the final key point that I will mention is that both failure and success are personal to you. Again, don't compare yourself to others and focus on what you want to achieve. Although do make sure to keep your goals flexible. Remember that failure to you may be different to failure to someone else. 
and use any of these personal failures as an opportunity to improve and learn. In next week's episode, we cover another core and key skill. We're going to look at how you can develop your problem solving skills to help you work better under pressure, perform better in your degree, and to also find solutions to any failures or problems you've had to therefore get better and grow. We're also going to examine what creativity really means and how anyone can be creative, even if you wouldn't normally label yourself as the creative type. To join me in discussion for this episode is the fantastic Professor Ian Turner. So be sure to listen to that next Monday. This episode was brought to you by the University of Derby Skills Team. Production, episode planning and editing was completed by Alexander Wood. Thanks to Stephen Plant for creating the amazing graphics and for balancing the audio of this episode. Thanks also go to Natalia Kodalavar, Tim Zalstra and Naomi Bowers-Joseph for giving feedback for this episode and the series on the whole. Thank you very much for listening.